Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. I'm here today with my boy Austin. Now listen, me and him might kind of look the same, right? Now he's he's a little bit bigger than me, but I will tell you this. We're the same because weirdly, uh, he's uh, from Oklahoma Yep. and I'm from Oklahoma and I moved away. He moved away. Um, we met one time at a conference, right? This is crazy. It's a good story. And um, yeah, we, he was at an event. I was speaking at this event. We were in the bathroom, both I'm like, look over, he's taking a leak, I'm taking a leak. And he's like, from Oklahoma. Yeah, and I go, yeah. And, and he goes, I live in Oklahoma. And I, and I go, get the fuck out of there. And that's the first thing I said, I said, get out of there. And what I'm in is, look, dude, in order for you to recreate and go to another level of your life, you got to get out of there. By the way, he's very successful. He was successful in Oklahoma. But he listened to what I said, not because I said it, but he's like, after, like uh, you're like, okay, like, affirming, like, I may need to make a move. He did, bam, guys blowing up through the roof. Um, by the way, I want to tell a story today. His story today, he's going to give at least five things that will totally change your life. 100% sure. Every single one of you right now that are watching this, he's got a beautiful wife. He's got beautiful kids. They're savages. He's got a kick-ass life. He's just catching fire. He's super successful, but where he's about to go is all the way to the moon. He's my brother. I'm close to him. So I wanted to share um, his, his, his life with you, his story with you, things that he did right, some things that he did wrong. And when you watch this, it's going to help you become a better person. It's going to help you recreate. It's going to help you become more successful. So Austin, I love you, bro. Super proud of you, man. You're kicking ass. Thanks, um, your bro. family's amazing. I appreciate that. I can that. tell a lot about um, a man, just not by his income, because most people now, everything's like financial. Yep. But your wife is a savage. Absolutely. You guys are crazy in love. His kids are amazing. Your kids are just... Dude, your kids are stronger than most 30-year-olds. And they're seven <laughs> and eight years old. They have been at it since they were born, man. Yeah, it's amazing. So, yeah. like, I'm just telling you, it tells me a lot about you by meeting that. your family. Yep. So, with that being said, he's all around uh, human excellence in all areas of life. Um, Austin, I'm just going to let you rip, man. I can sure. ask you questions, but I'd like you to just take us and teach us and let us know what you're doing now, yeah, yeah. Um, where you started and just rip, just like we talked about. For sure, man. One thing I want to say is thank you for having me out here. I love it. Uh, Andy walked me through his facility, uh, showed me. We just worked out at the gym, so the endorphins are high, feeling a good pump, and I love that. I mean, that's what it's about, right? Yeah. And I joke around at the beginning of uh, my career and my entrepreneurial journey, I had a mentor that I met at the gym, right? Mm -hmm. I was asking the questions, and I was doing the due diligence on how to get bigger, how to gain the muscle, because I was just a, you know, a, a wrestler, cross-country track kid coming out of high school, and I wanted to put on size. And so what do I sit there and do? I sit there and ask the guys that were bigger than me, the guys that had the physique that I wanted. And so that's kind of how I fell face first into mentorship. And uh, those two guys that I had worked out with were about 10 years older than me at the time and guiding me in the right direction of, you know, you got to eat this, you got to lift like this and letting me basically – uh, coattail them and follow them around at the gym, you know? Yeah. And those are the same guys that, that so, so I go, let's rewind on my story. Let's start yeah. there. Okay. Cause that, that was huge. But what happened was around 17 years old, I had two felonies and two misdemeanors. Mm -hmm. And so I was, you know, in Edmond, so you're, you're familiar with Oklahoma and I had, and, and not to get too far into the story, the, the situation, but no, no, I, think, I made I think, some mistakes, you I, know, I think it's important guys. Listen, number one, I think it's important that when somebody says I had two felonies, two misdemeanors, you understand that very successful people did shit that they're like, I don't like who I am. I don't want those outcomes. Like, like I don't like this. And, and, and so you touch the stove, and that's the reason why you're changing so many people's lives now. And 100%. the man that we see now, do listen. I told my wife a long time ago, I said, I don't want to find a preacher whose dad is a preacher, whose dad is a preacher, whose dad is a preacher. He never did anything wrong, never had a drink, never had a drug, never did anything, never had the crazy temptations that I have because I don't feel like he can understand me, right? Exactly. Okay, because 95% of the people in this world are lost. I said, I want a preacher who literally was lost and then he found God and he was able to quit it all. Yep. And he was able to become strong. And I want that guy to help me because he did it so I can do it. So my point is, everybody watching this has been through some shit, period, because they're human beings. Yep. It's all a little different. Sure. But you are a comeback kid, and you're an overcomer. Thank you. And so when he says this stuff, like, I love hearing the story. It's like the uglier it gets, the more it makes me appreciate True. where you are now. Because if I saw you driving around now in your, in your Lamborghinis and your Ferraris and got your big house on the beach and all this shit, I'm like, dude, that guy's lucky. No, that guy's not lucky. That guy made a decision to change. Absolutely. Hey, guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. As you're listening to me talk to my brother, Austin, about how he's killed it, crushed it, and he has a dream life. He's coaching and teaching people every aspect of real estate. Now, if you go to Google, she's our mother, and you Google, like, how do people become multimillionaires, you'll see that it will tell you real estate is number one. 
Okay, so if you wanna learn how to make money, you gotta learn real estate. Guys, you see the number below? Just shoot a text message, okay? Austin will reach out to you in the next 24 hours. Tell him what you need help with. He'd love to help coach you and teach you anything and everything you wanna do with real estate. I love you guys. Let's get back to the video. So anyway, so you got these misdemeanors. I got two felonies, two misdemeanors. But it's funny that you say that because my parents are pretty conservative. So I, I, I have, I don't grow up in a bad home, by yeah. all means. I, I give my parents a, much, a lot of accolades, very loving Christian family. Um, but at the same time, I had the mindset at 17 years old of like, oh, well, what do they know? They haven't experienced life. So let me mm -hmm. test this out. You have, you don't drink. Let me figure this out. You don't do this. Let me figure this out. You don't mm -hmm. know what you're talking about. And kind of the 17 year old, you know, don't tell me what to do mentality. Yeah. And so I essentially I got in a fight and I hit somebody over there with a tire iron and I got these charges at a party of doing these wrong things. And I realized really early on that, uh, I, I, I mean, I was between... And, I, and this isn't one of those prison stories. I want to be extremely clear. I didn't go to prison. I don't have any prison time. I don't have like any of that. And I'm not trying to gain any of that no, this, credibility, this is, this bro. Is, this is just my story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is, if you're around the wrong people, you're going to do bad shit. Yep. And if you don't, and if you were around great people when you were younger, I'm just going to, outside of I was around them, but I was choosing to be around the wrong crowd. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Choosing to do the wrong things. And, and, and honestly, there's nobody else to blame other than myself for that situation. Facts. Because I was, I was seeking, I was seeking it out, right? As a young full of piss and vinegar young man lost and you know what full circle to fast forward this a little bit the marine corps was the best place for me yeah. it saved my life in a way and i recreated myself the first time right there yeah see what i love about my podcast is my po podcast is real everybody wants to come on and tell everybody the highlight reel of success yeah right and then when people start when people make a bad decision they do something wrong right dude they're like well, this guy hit someone on the head of the tire iron. This guy did some crap when he was young. And that guy came back and changed. Sure. I can change that. And that's my point. I'm sure. an overcomer. I'm an underdog. I love you. The, 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 the crazier the story, the bigger the testimony. That's true. But if somebody I don't want to leave out on this that I see a lot of times is like, you guys don't have to be a rags to riches or a drug addict to wealthy guy story. Because, Andy, I feel this, and you can probably under testify to this, but the biggest trap that maybe a lot of these viewers are stuck on is the mediocre, mediocrity, comfort level. Mm -hmm. And so those people that... Ah, I didn't have, I didn't go and get hit somebody with a tire. I didn't go and do drugs. I didn't go and have this bad habits and, and they can't reflect or relate. And so they get stuck in this mm -hmm. hundred thousand dollar mindset. They get stuck this salaried mindset. Mm -hmm. And I think those people get forgot about a lot because in today's modern day of social media, uh, you know, it's a cooler story and it is, it's a, it's a more interesting story to see the guy that had a felony to multi-millions now. But I do think that I see the people that reached out to me through my journey that are still there. Mm were the people that were comfortable because they made a good living, they have good parents, they have this stuff. And so for all of them, I mean, what I want to say right now essentially is, is that you can, the comfort, the comfort that you live right now is the most dangerous thing that you have. Mm -hmm. And so when I had first built my own 3,500 square foot house at 29 years old, and I had been making it as a builder to fast forward a little bit in my life after I'd got out of the Marine Corps. When you got in trouble, right? Yeah, yeah. How much uh, after that did you get, how much time? Until so they ha what happened was, what happened was I was looking at six to 12 months in juvenile delinquent center uh -huh. and I had already wanted to join the military. So I was a senior in high school when I caught these charges. So uh -huh. I caught him as a youthful offender. So uh -huh. I didn't catch him as an adult. Yeah. And so what they gave me was they were looking at giving me the juvenile delinquent, you know, going to a juvenile delinquent center, strip me straight. But fortunately this is in 2006. Mm -hmm. And so if everybody's familiar with what happened, was going on across the pond mm -hmm. in 2006 is the war was kicking off. And mm -hmm. so I said, I want to join the military and I already did. But this was going to ruin my chances. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to be Mr. Marine, you know, honorable discharge guy. And that's my mindset when I was a, a high schooler. Mm -hmm. And I go and do this, and this is going to wreck my career and spin me down the tube of the, uh, essentially, of the, the corrections system. facility, right? Yeah. yeah, and you just see how people get caught in that. Yeah. And so uh, I had a wild recruiter. My recruiter went with my attorney at, at that time. He and wanted And went you. to the freaking judge multiple uh, of the uh, judges hearings and they they dismissed all my charges and let you join the and military? let me join the marine corps dude listen in 2006 that guy dude that guy changed your life 100 percent, dude i'm going to tell you the power of believing in somebody that recruiter went above and beyond he Look, didn't have to do that no i was gonna say any other recruiter wouldn't have done hey, it. i get another guy this is too hard yeah dude that's amazing man yeah, yeah, you should, you should, uh, you should mail that guy. I should totally mail that guy. Mail that guy. I still remember his last name too. I totally should. Yeah, you should mail yeah, him yeah. a present. Matter of fact, when you get out of here, I'm going to now. You need to mail him. Yeah. A thousand dollar check. Chadwell, Staff Sergeant Chadwell. If you're ever watching this, yeah, that's just who find him, mail him a thousand dollar check, and just say, "Hey, just love facts. you. Take your wife out to dinner." Yeah. 
Thanks for so, saving my life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So right. he got you in the military. You did how many years? Yeah, so I did four years. Okay, so, so I deployed to Iraq in 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a, a cool operations over there. I was in the infantry. Um, and then, then I came back, got out around roughly 2010, 2011. And uh, at that point, uh, I struggled when I got out, too, because mm -hmm. I went back home. I was in Oklahoma again, working construction for my dad. Uh, my dad owns a concrete company, so I was just going back to that. And it was really tough for me at that time because I'd been... I've done so much stuff. I mean, I have a picture of me shaking hands with Senator McCain during the presidential elections in a soccer field, in a combat zone, with a belt-fed machine gun on my lap at 19 years old. And so now, you go from I go by that back to, society. to Oklahoma, and I'm sitting in a skid steer or digging a hole, and I feel like that would, could have been the end of, like, that's just what the rest of my life looked like. And, it, and I worked for my dad. I was grateful for the job, mm -hmm. but I just wasn't happy. I wasn't satisfied, bro. So, so I needed to so learn. So how'd you more. become a builder? So those same guys that I'd worked out with before, I went back to the gym when I come back to my hometown, right? I linked up with my mentors from the gym, my buddies. And they're like, dude, you should start your own company. You've been in construction. Your family's been in construction. You know construction. Why don't you start building homes? I was like, okay. So I, uh, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And again, they kind of convinced me. And these are two dudes that at that time, and you, as you know, somebody in Oklahoma, owned, one of them owns a landscape business. The other one owned a, a real estate company at the mm -hmm. time. I didn't know anything about real estate. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you can do it. And these are two dudes that dropped out of high school and didn't even have GEDs. Right. And I was like, y'all are killing it. You're driving the, you know, the cool cars at the gym. You work out when you want. You have vacations. And to me, at 21 years old, I mean, they were living it, you know. Yeah, hell and yeah. Well, they were living yeah, it. Yeah, and they're your age, you know. They're, a little, they're older than me, old enough to me. I'm like, damn, y'all are living it up. I still remember one of them gave me, he was supposed to go when I got married to my, to my bachelor party in Vegas. Now I did my bachelor party in Vegas. And he couldn't make it, and he gave me a thousand bucks. Like, hey, man, here's a thousand bucks. And I was mind blown. How did you just give me a thousand dollars to go to Vegas? You know, that kind of money was crazy for a young man, you know? And, uh, anyways, so I go, he convinces me to do it. So I, I just figure it out. I start going. I tell my dad, I'm going to start the, I'm going to start building. My dad's like, okay. You, you know, you could still work for me while you're running that project. So I start building this one house. I built one spec house. So one house, ground up, construction. Uh, like I said, I grew up in construction. So I had, that was the, and that's the reason I did it too. For everybody that's watching this, the reason I went into construction was because that's all I knew. Like, that was just the nature. If my dad was in oil and gas, specialized skill I would have gone into oil and gas. If my dad was in car sales, I would have been in car sales. Mm -hmm. But that was what I knew. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, here we go. And so I move over, build a spec house. And that one spec house I made... I built it, took me like nine, 10 months, mm -hmm. and I sold it and made net $45,000, and that was more than I was making per hour fully for my whole, the whole year mm -hmm. at, for my dad. And I was like, I opened, it opened my mind on how money was made, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, wow, this, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I did a few more after that, a few more after that. I did some parade homes, um, and then I caught a few customs, and custom homes are essentially like if I were to build a house for Andy and Jackie, and we sit down, we make plans, we design the whole thing from ground up, and so I started getting into that game, and then I got more and more and grew that business, but what I realized was that I got stuck. So now I'm trading my time for money, but I'm making a lot of money. And similar to your story, which is what um, I connect with you a lot on, is that I felt like I had to be a different person as a custom home builder because I'm, I'm entertaining that. Like you said, you wore the jackets. You wore the, I wore long sleeves because I'm coming out of the Marine Corps pretty tattooed. Don't have my hands and neck done at the time, but I'm pretty tattooed. And so when I'd meet with you and your wife living in Oklahoma... I felt like I had to be this vision of somebody else, this builder, this guy in cowboy boots selling you this custom home. And you being from Oklahoma, you probably really I totally to understand. Bro. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so I have to just people they just truth is people just judge you. They do. They do. Yeah. Well, and what I've realized over the time now, I mean, fast forward to my mindset now, is that a lot of those that mindset and that thought process was was I imprisoned myself. Yeah, yeah. Dude, if I would have came to the table nobody, with short sleeves and been like, hey, let's build this house and have the energy that I really wanted to bring who I was outside of the they office. They would have built it. They would have built it. Yeah. But I was faking it because I, I, I felt like I, I always needed say to be that, that man. Guy. Yeah, you're a prisoner inside your own life. Yeah. yeah. Nobody was screwing with you. You were screwing with you. And it was all those voices yeah. that, you know, uh, through from growing up, mm -hmm. you can't be successful with tattoos. You don't have a college degree. Yeah. And so I had all these things and I'm working for my family and then I go to start my own business. And so I'm like, I have to, I guess this is, and, and, and I'm just the kind of guy that I'm going to do what has to be done just in some, order to make the money to provide programming. for my family. Yeah. It, it was old programming. Yeah. But there was many times though, I remember getting my first sleeve when I was in the Marine Corps and I, I visited a, a friend of mine's house, ate with his family. And I was just, I visited back in Oklahoma and I remember him telling me, he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, it's the type of guys like you that give me job security. He was high up in oil and gas. And I just remember carrying that chip on my shoulders. Dude, so I love that. Fucking much, dude. You need to I mail, you just... need to mail him a letter too and say, thank you. <laughs> I, I made a mistake you. and got a little arrogant once I started making money and ran into him again. 
Kind of just shoved it in his face, but no. I, I wasn't a prick about it. No, but it, you just so. need to say, thank you, I owe you. That's the truth. No, seriously, because that was the greatest food anybody could have ever fed me. Yeah, when they just... Dude, listen, I'm not even joking. When somebody says I can't do something, You're like, good. to me, like if I was to walk up on the street, right, and somebody would walk up to me and go, dude, you changed my life. I'm like, dude, thank you. Love you, man. Have a blessed day. It goes in one ear and out the other. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm not grateful. Like, I want you to understand this. Flattery doesn't own me. Okay, I, I know that I'm going out to change people's lives. I intentionally woke up to change that guy's life. But it's the guy that comes up and goes, dude, you're a piece of shit. And I'm like, thank you. Now, I'm not going to let that go out the other ear. I'm going to hold that. I'm going to put that in my little baggie right here on my shoulder. And anytime I don't feel like doing something, I know that you're holding your breath waiting for me to fail. You're going to fucking suffocate. Exactly. So thank you. I owe you for that one. I needed that. I was actually looking for an edge today. Yeah, so I, I appreciate that. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like so, like, so I just want to tell you, like, dude, I would write that guy a letter, too, and Good say, point. thank you. I owe you. The, the greatest thing that anyone ever said to me was what you said to me, and I wouldn't be where I am today without what you said. So thank you. Hope you have a blessed day. You're exactly yeah. right. Do you carry that stuff with you? Oh, and love it. works it. great. Yeah. Oh, and it, it's not harmful. No. It's good for it's me. It's good for you. It's motivating. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Bet against me. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So, so anyways, keep going. So, so but I'm just saying, like, I love that. No, you're I can't, right. I can't and believe that guy was so that, grateful to say that to you. Because I remember being like, oh, man, you know, and it's one of those deals that you're like, that's not what I want. I don't want you. I, I never heard the phrase before. But it's like, I didn't want that guy's life. I didn't want anything that he has. But at that time, when you're young, your mind is very... You're looking for validation. You're looking for validation. Yeah. And this is something, too, that I realized through my, through my journey is when you don't have any money, when you're not making any money yet, when you're young and you're watching this and, and you've never been anywhere yet, everybody is more successful than you. Mm -hmm. So, so you, it's hard for you to say, uh, uh, who should I listen to and who should I not, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're still a child at mind. And so you, ha you, you chase all these people and you can't discredit them because technically they have more than you. Yeah, you're just but trying you to But you have learn. to qualify mm -hmm. what life they really have, which is an amazing way to free frame it. But I didn't have that thought process at that time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just part of your learning cycle. Part of the learning cycle. Yeah. And it's led me to who I am today. So yeah. it works well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that happens. You go through the building. You build a bunch of houses. Yeah, I was doing a lot. I mean, we were doing like high-end custom homes in Oklahoma, you know, 4,000 square foot plus. I had seven running at one time. Um, I was hating, I didn't hate what I did. I don't mind construction and stuff, uh, but I, it wasn't going to get me to where I wanted to go and it wasn't giving me the time freedom. And it just, it was something that I felt like I needed to do because that's just what was in front of me. Right. I could have stayed there forever. I could have made a good living and done it, but I realized you, you I had a chasing calling. that next. Yeah. I Dude, calling, I love what man. he just said. You have a calling. I had a calling. My wife and I, I mean, I'm getting texts during Easter. People will walk through their homes with their families on the holidays because their families will come to their home and then they'll want to take everybody to their custom home that's under construction. You see what I'm saying? And so mm -hmm. they'll walk through the home. Let me show you guys what we're going to do here. And what do you think they do when they walk through that home? Oh, it looks like Steve broke this and this isn't done. And where was the sink that was done? And it could be Easter. It could be Christmas Eve. And so I'd get these messages. And, I mean, I've worked for CPAs, attorneys, high-level oil and gas guys. And I was just like, this, they, they, don't, they do not care that you're a human. And so it's very, it was like, just beating me up and it's my personality constant. i'm like it's i want to go to blows i'm not happy about it. like don't yeah. fucking text it's me just like turmoil constantly. it is it's constantly and then in 2020 it got way worse and it was just like the the, the eye-opening event right in 2020 so now i'm fighting subcontractors i'm fighting materials because i can't control material costs mm -hmm. i'm fighting being able to get stuff and then customers surprisingly enough were still wanting property and wanting things done and so I had a lot of people coming in but then i had an inventory issue i had all these things that were coming up and it was just the right time but to rewind about two years before I came to the point in 2020, my wife and I had started investing in our education. And so I knew about two years before that I needed to learn more about real estate investing. I wanted to buy property. I'd heard this, this, this story about financial freedom and cash flow. And, and I liked that. And the one reason I liked that is because, one, I understood that my business that I was already in. But I, but I realized that real estate investing is a non-emotional investment. Mm -hmm. And so a custom home is somebody's home. And it's a very emotional investment. I mean, if you come home to your house and you have a scratch across the countertop, Jackie and you are not happy about the situation. But when you guys, you just want to know the numbers on your real estate portfolio. Mm -hmm. Is it making money or is it losing money? And how does it work? Yeah. And so it's, I was like, that stuff makes sense to me because I don't want to deal with the emotions. I want to get into real estate because it's about the numbers and the performance. Mm -hmm. And I know I can perform. And so hands down, 
that's what I started investing in. I started learning. I started taking these courses before Instagram was even out there. You know, you'd go to these seminars where they were in a classroom or you'd fly out and, mm-hmm. and I would just be notes, taking notes, understanding what underwriting a deal was. Well, My was wife a, and I That was I the best both, learning you could do. Best learning we could do. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. As you're listening to me talk to my brother Austin about how he's killed it, crushed it, and he has this dream life. He's coaching and teaching people every aspect of real estate. Now, if you go to Google, she's our mother, and you Google, like, how do people become multimillionaires, you'll see that it will tell you real estate is number one. Okay, so if you want to learn how to make money, you got to learn real estate. Guys, you see the number below? Just shoot a text message, okay? Austin will reach out to you in the next 24 hours. Tell him what you need help with. He'd love to help coach you and teach you anything and everything you want to do with real estate. I love you guys. Let's get back to the video. And I would take my wife with me. I wanted her on board because yeah. this was our vision together. That's why you made it, bro. Because of my family? Oh, If she, if she wouldn't have went hands with you, down. you wouldn't be here. 100%. Yeah, so I agree. I always say take your family with you because when you went home, she could help you understand what was next. The vision. And, and when you said, hey, babe, I want to do this, she heard the same information you heard, so she's on board. And maybe she hears something that, that I missed, right? And yeah. we can ma- match it together and say, no, mm-hmm. I thought it was this way. And I'm like, oh, that's a good question. Yeah, or they see it's the same message, but they interpret it totally differently, different. right? Yep. You don't always miss it. Like somebody says something, and it means two different things to two different people. Right. So right. you and her self-developing. Um, 2020 in. happens. You're about yeah. two years into your minds running. Yep. And then um, throughout this process, um, I built my own homes, multiple. I had two daughters. Um, obviously, for the, the, from the time I got out of the Marine Corps to this point, I'm married. Right. Mm-hmm. And so now this, this year right now, I'll be married 11 years. Um, but I was just doing it all. Like from that time, from the time I met my wife after the Marine Corps, which I want to talk about a minute. I want to rewind a second, Andy, because I talked about getting out of the Marine Corps, and I've had a lot of veterans come to me. And uh, a lot of people on my program end up being veterans, too. And out of the Marine Corps, like I said, I'm going from this guy to this person I want to be. You feel lost when you get out of the military. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have such a purpose anymore. And I, and I realized that, so for what I did was I shifted the purpose to something larger than myself again. And mm-hmm. the larger thing for myself, and we could say, oh, it was for family. That's for my kids. No, no, no. I brought them along my vision. It's not, it's with them, not mm-hmm. just for them. And mm-hmm. I, I think it irritates me a little bit when people are like, it's for my family. Well, it's like, if it was for your family, then you would have already fucking done it. And it's tr- truly a lie a lot of times. Cause y'all hear guys like that, dude, I just want to grow wealth for my family. I'm like, well, then why aren't you? So yeah, I brought it's them like along. If you wanted us to have a six pack, you'd have one. Exactly. You just don't so don't blame one. them. It's almost blaming them yeah, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, you just don't want one. Yeah. And so anyways, so for you vets out there, anybody watching this, I want you to take notes on this because it's huge. Find a new purpose. Be driven to the next level. You can do more. You can take it to where you are from now. You don't, it's not, it's like the old football guy that played the quarterback in high school. You know, I'll never be as good as I once was. Vets get out and they think the same thing. I'll never do the coolest of shit that I did while I was in the military. No, you can go out there and create it or join a community of it and be a part of it. It's huge. That's what you've created here. Similar. You know what I'm saying? And you just become a leader. And exactly. just yeah. and by the way, you also altered your identity. True. Right? Like, listen, this is a big thing, and then I want to go to what you're doing today. Sure. Um, you, you can change a behavior, right? You can create a new routine. You can do all these things. But if you don't change your identity, which is who you think you are, none of that even matters. Nailed it. And I think that you really, like, you became a different person. My identity wasn't the Marine. Mine anymore, right? It became the. It became something different. You're you, exactly. You right. chase progress. hundred percent. You're a progress chaser. Hundred percent. It's addicting. Yeah. It's the most addicting thing in the world. That's your addiction. It's 100%. progress. And as long as you're getting it, you feel you're fed. Uh huh. Absolutely. And when you're not getting progress, you feel stuck and start 100%. to get antsy, which means you're going to get in trouble. Yep. And that's the reason why guys like us get in trouble. Um, when we don't have progress is because we get antsy, which is why we go to the gym. Exactly. We go to the gym. (laughs) Yeah. We go to the gym because we keep the anxiety off us. And a lot of people watching us, like the secret is the gym helps you build your identity and love yourself. And you take care of yourself and these chemicals and endorphins and all these things release in the gym because we're doing hard things intentionally. When you intentionally do hard things, like go to the gym every morning at 5 AM and give everything you got and empty the tank you get all these chemicals, so you're in a better mood for the next 12 hours, your life's amazing, and you love yourself. And then plugging yourself into doing hard things in, like, in business and like helping people yep. and doing all these things and stretching yourself, 
those things like make your identity, like your purpose increase. Like people don't burn out, they lose their purpose. Uh, that, that's a good one. Absolutely. And what you're saying is like people in the military, they have purpose and then they go back to real life and then they have, they don't, they have a job. They don't so, have, exactly. They don't so have a purpose. They anymore. don't have a purpose. Yeah. For so, the greater good. so the purpose is to, I believe self develop to build a new identity so that you can find a new purpose. Exactly. And dude, God's going to use you to lead some herd of people in this world to do something great and you'll find your people. Oh, I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree, man. Yeah. And so what, what are you doing now? Tell us what you're doing today. Yeah, for sure. Cause I so, think what you're doing today is like you've overcame all these things. And by the way, like all you guys are watching this, like anyone, everyone's qualified. Anyone can become a multi multi-millionaire. Anyone can be happy as shit. Like we are and love problems and hard things because Absolutely, we get through dude. them. That gives us progress, right? Yeah, it's who you become through that process that changes, right? Yeah. Like refined massively. by the fire, you know, exactly. of hard shit. Um, but what are you doing today? Like tell everybody what your life looks like today, what you're doing Shoot, today. My life looks like today is probably very similar to yours. You know, I wake up and I go to the gym in the early in the morning and I get to hang out with my kids. I live in beautiful Southern California in Carmel Valley. Um, I've created this life, you know, this vision for the life that I want. And I mean, I'm already living five years in advance of the next life that I want and, uh, I enjoy it. And it's all through two things, you know, real estate and educating other people in real estate has been massive, you know, so, not just real estate investing, but also the basic principles of life that have, you have to formulate before you become a real estate investor. Okay. You know so, so guys, I'm going to, and I want you to go over this cause you're a killer real estate guy. Yeah. And I want you to talk about some things that you do in real estate. Sure. Is that cool? Yep. And and then that way everybody can understand how you have this badass life. I love it. And then I want everybody to know that like he coaches and teaches people how to have the same life he has. Okay. Which we put a text number where you guys can text him and he will go with you what's next. Yep. Um, walk sure. us through this. Yeah. So essentially what this like is, what let's you talk do about like for, what I've done for my like, students, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, what that, I do too. Cause, cause like what you do and then you teach them to do this. Yeah. Yep. So essentially what I do is I, I've been able to, you buy a value add property. So you have a property that needs fixed, right? Maybe you got the neighbor's house down the street that you see that has the grass really high. Maybe there's a roof issue. Um, you're able to take this old crappy house add value to it and create equity. Mm -hmm. Equity is the spread between what you owe on the property with debt and what the property is worth. And so a lot of people that have this vision that they have to go buy a rental property and put 20, 30% down. But if you do the quick math on that, most people get discouraged really quickly because they don't make enough money to go buy enough rental property to actually get themselves to a, a, a wealth, to like mm -hmm. really create wealth, mm -hmm. right? And so what I did when I noticed the very beginning with my construction ability, with my, uh, with essentially just my wherewithal and my fortitude to follow through mm -hmm. is that I could buy these deals and I could add value to them. I could paint them a little bit. I could hire somebody to mow the lawn. I could tune them up and then I could turn around and have a property that I owed much less on when the value was much higher. That's right. And so you could do that one time and then you learn a system to where you can continue to multiply that. And then, it, so you go from one property, which is a lot of my, the guys and gals on the program, they'll mm -hmm. go from one property and then they'll go from to five, 10, and then now it becomes a volume game at a certain level. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're creating equity, you're creating net worth, you're creating cash flow and you're creating a whole nother business. So whether you like your W2 income or you guys are in sales and you like your 1099, what you guys got to think about is also advantageous to this is the tax deduction. So a lot of you guys, if you have W2s or 1099s, you're going to, you're going to be paying the tax man no matter what. So you have this one vehicle, the one you earn in now, and that vehicle makes you your active income. If you were to go and buy real estate, what you're going to do is you're going to be able to depreciate those assets and offset the tax burden that you have with your main gig. That's amazing. And so, so he just said you got active income, right? Where you're which at is now. Yep. your primary job, sure. right? Which he's not asking you to quit your job and join this. He's saying that you can do your primary, your, have your active income, and you can learn what he's telling you. And then when that makes enough, you may go over full time to that one day. <laughs> That's what happens. Which is what happens. You get yeah. bit by the bug. But yep. you can start there. And, and learn sure. it. I think you teach people in your coaching program how to get that income to surpass their active 100%. income. And then they are off on their own. Exactly. Right? And I've had people quit their job in less than 90 days. And, and I don't sure. advise, I mean, I sit there and don't tell them, but they have. Yeah. Because what well, they do well, is they, they see, see the money coming Well, their they bank see account. what I saw. I think back to that spec house I built. I made 45 grand. And I was like, I made 45 grand. And just, I see how money's made mm -hmm. a bit. And they do it. And they'll make 25 grand in three months. And then they're like, they're like, oh, I flipped this thing. And the way they do that, so let's back up so you guys really catch this one. Pay attention because what happens is instead of keeping that property as a rental, we could sell it. 
So as long as we do our math right, the way I show you guys how to run your numbers and analyze these deals, when you have that equity spread, when you have that gap mm -hmm. between what you're all in on the property at and what it's worth, the biggest ROI you're going to get is the day that you is the day that it's done. So you could sell that property right now mm -hmm. and make the most amount of money. But depending on what the business needs, depending on what you need as an individual, which is what we go over and really build out a blueprint for you individually, That's is awesome. is uh, you you know we want do we want to take this deduction because we make really good money, or do I just need to start making good money and I have the ability to sell this thing right now and I want to put this cash aside and start mm -hmm. building the business, and so. The key to this, though, is the way we analyze the numbers, the way we make offers, the way we find deals, the way we get into it is that we want to make sure that we have a lot of uh, we have other exit strategies. Mm -hmm. So we could flip it. We could refinance it and keep it as a rental. Mm -hmm. We could sell or finance it and become the bank for somebody else. If you guys mm -hmm. don't know what a contract for deed is or a lease option is, that's something we can dive into, too. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have multiple exit strategies when we take down a deal, not just risk. OK, cool. So, guys, so number one, you, you don't have to quit your job. Okay, and you can make a lot of money. You keep your active income, and it'll teach you how to do it. You teach, number one, how to borrow the money for these properties, probably, and how to do it yes. very easily and efficiently. 100%. You teach where to find the deals, how to make the deals, and then you teach when you get the deal what options you have to do with that deal. Yep. And some, may, some you may go right, some you may go left. Yep. They don't all have to be the same. No, no, but we, we, we analyze that. We have to look at the, the, you know, you have to match the deal, the specific deal, and see if it's a deal with the kind of options that you have. And if you only have one option, then you only have one arrow in the quiver. So you don't have anything. Yeah. So you have to have multiple options on these properties. And that's what truly, in my mind, makes a real real estate investor is having these multiple exit strategies and multiple options to look at this deal so that you can actually make a profit on this thing. And if it doesn't line up with one of our buckets that we can't put it in, then we're going to pass on it. So we're okay. making money on it no matter what. Okay. So a lot of people, right, and I'm just going to tell you this, when you make it and you're really successful, you're like, dude, it's easy. <laughs> right? I probably say right, that intentionally, right, right? Right, but I say this all the time. I'm like, dude, it's easy. Um, and, and, and it is easy. The problem is, is that you had this belief that you had to wear these long sleeve shirts because of your tattoos. Yeah. You were the problem in your head. Correct. There's a lot of people right now when you're saying, I can make you a multimillionaire. It's easy, right? They're thinking, I don't understand what he's saying. He's talking about deal, deal structure, barn money, finding. I don't have any money. Yeah. I don't have those things. Those things don't apply to me. Good point. And and so many people like count themselves out of being able to do what you're talking about. And that's why they check out, right? Dude. So can you just say like, like just so we can make sure if anyone right now text you and they're like, I want to join your coaching program. I want you to train me. Can you teach anyone to learn this? Absolutely. At all? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And the reason that is, and you're exactly right. I do get people. I, I, it's mind blowing, Andy. So I've gotten people that are like, yeah, dude, well, it's just the I got $200,000 and I don't know if I can get into real estate yet. I'm not ready. And I'm like, when will you be ready? You know? And then I have people that are, are adamant about getting into it and, um, uh, they just, they just can't get over what you just said. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They yeah, have well, mental it's, block. It's yeah. It's, it's the, the it, greatest this can't work for me. Yeah. The greatest, uh, weapon that a warrior has is his mind. It's, it's not the way, it's not anything else. It's not, his, it's not even his gun, it's his mind, right? right? And so like we've learned, we haven't achieved things before because we honestly didn't believe we could. And then right now you're like Superman. It's like, if I came in here and I was like, I need you to do this thing. You're like, dude, yeah, we'll do that, done. <laughs> it's your mind is so driven, right? But it wasn't always that way. And you, we've all had up and downs. And so like, this is a good opportunity for a lot of people to find their way out into being financially free, it is. into being free in your mind. This guy doesn't just teach you real estate, okay? He teaches you every aspect of real estate, but also teaches you how to be mentally free, teaches you how to become a good person. Like I envision all these real estate things you're teaching, you also drop in hints of all these other things, how to build a well-developed life and learn this skill to make money. 100%, Yeah, absolutely. It, this, so this is a competitive edge and then I want you to bring it home. Whoever understands money, really good, right, can make money. And honestly, whenever I was younger, I could sit here and listen to you, and like I would be like, I don't understand what you're saying. And honestly, like I feel stupid to say that, but I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah. Because I didn't understand money, I just would like zone but that's out. That's where we have to start. And I think Yeah, that so it's I think this is important. a place for you that you guys can all learn money from you so that you can teach them about money. That's that's huge and that's what so 
One of the things that is super important about this, the business, your, even your life, is understanding debt. A lot of people have fear about debt, but they just don't understand it. Mm -hmm. They're just really scared about it. There's a lot debt. of safe debt. There's a lot of safe debt, mm -hmm. right? And if you know, I mean, if you don't have any fighting skills and you jump in the ring, it's not safe. Mm -hmm. If you have all of these fighting skills and you jump in the ring, it's a lot safer. Right. So the same concept is, is, is applies to this. If in the way you learn those skills is from somebody else that has those skills that's going to pass those down to you and work with you on them. And yeah. so you said something a minute ago. People do have that mindset like I'm not ready for it or they have these mental blocks like I don't have 20, 30, 50 grand set aside or I have to do this before I start into real estate. And, and I t it's not true. Yeah. It's not true because you have to start learning because you can't see opportunity if you don't have the glasses on and you need somebody to help you put those glasses on and adjust those eyes. Hey there, sales warriors. Are you tired of facing objections left and right, struggling to close deals, and watching your competitors snatch away your prospects? Well, you're not alone. Recent surveys indicate that a whopping 72% of sales professionals struggle with handling objections, leading to missed opportunities and lost revenue. But fear not, there's a solution to this all too common problem. Enter Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook, your ultimate guide to mastering sales strategies and objection handling like a pro. Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook isn't just a collection of tips and tricks, it's a comprehensive roadmap to success packed with actionable insights and real world examples that you can start implementing right away. And here's the best part. Andy's Playbook isn't just for seasoned sales veterans. Whether you're a rookie looking to kickstart your career or a seasoned pro aiming to sharpen your skills, there's something for everyone in this playbook. So if you're ready to arm yourself with the knowledge and confidence you need to crush objections, close more deals, and skyrocket your sales career, don't hesitate. Click the link below to grab your copy of Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook today. Remember, success favors the prepared. Equip yourself with the tools you need to outshine the competition and become a sales powerhouse. The time to elevate your game is now. Now let's make this your best year yet. Now let's get back to the video. Yeah, and that's it. And by the way, guys, a good coach, which he's an amazing coach. I want you to understand this. He's built this badass life, okay? He's not going to throw you in the ring, okay? And, and then go fight when you don't know how to fight. Correct. The point of the coaching program is to literally teach you how, when you're ready, to make a good, calculated, educated decision Bingo. to be financially free. Yeah. And that way, when you make your first deal, you've had a coach. He's been with you along the way. They'll you probably even help underwrite. No, that's a I good do. deal. I yeah, know, like, my one on ones, I help underwrite the yeah, whole thing. I love that. Like, I mean, and I didn't even know understand the inside of it, but like, but like that's it. Like you it's 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 bulletproof. <laughs> it yeah. really is. And it's everybody's bulletproof. and everybody like the question is you asked it a second ago and I and it's super important. You know, when will you be ready? Like if you're not, you have to start somewhere. You have to start digesting the information in order to better understand the situation. You, you know, these people that maybe aren't, think they're not ready or it's because they have a misconception on how it's done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. just don't know, like what you said a second ago, 10, 20, 10 years ago, you wouldn't have understood the situation. No, you wouldn't today, understand what I said. I'm like, thank God I did this. And by the way, I want to tell everybody how I made a decision. Okay. Because I know people are always like, well, I don't know. You know, look. I always say this thing. I say, let's play this out. That's like my thing. Let's play this out. If you don't do anything and you don't coach with him and you don't learn real estate and you don't learn how to do these things that he's talking about, that's created him to become a multimillionaire. Let's play this out. You're going to stay the same. Okay? So what are you afraid of? Like I had to ask myself, like, what am I afraid of? So like, let's play this out. Let's say I do this thing. And it works. Yep. My whole life has changed forever. That's where I started. Yeah. I had to ask the same questions. I think people think that you and I maybe don't ask, they never ask that question. Yeah, but like, but we're I, the I played same it out, right? Yeah. And you're like, I'm more scared of staying where I am. I mean, why do you think like, we just we just talked about me moving? Yeah. Like, you think that was an easy, super easy, snappy decision, and I just skipped off, and you guys checked it out on Instagram, and it was cakewalk. I'll be I'll be completely honest with you guys watching this, and you too, Andy. Like, that's why I was like, it was helpful, but I had done enough things in my life when Andy's like, yeah, dude, fucking move. I'm like. All right, I got to start unwinding these pieces and take the action. But that's because of who I've built, and I've and, I, and you slowly build a callus to that mindset to where you can start well, and watch and making that lead. move, right? And making that move. Just and by the way, you were very successful. But making that move, as scary as it was, when you asked me, right, you were like, "Hey, man, I'm thinking about what I say. Do it." Yep. I'm like, "Do it." Like, look, dude, successful people they move with urgency. They move with speed. They don't think about stuff that they want. Look, look. I always ask people, I'm like, do you really want to know or are you just asking? Like, if you came up to me and you're like, dude, I want to, I want to be a millionaire. And I'm like, do you really want to become one 
or are you just asking? Like, do you really want to know? Because if you want to know, I'm going to tell you, and you better move. You better take the action. Yeah, you better do it, okay? Because if you really want to know, then I'll tell you, or are you just asking? Because a lot of people are just asking. They're just asking, like, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do you get in shape? How do you have a better relationship? Do... They don't really care. They're just asking people. Okay, if you really want to know, here's what I'll tell you. When I told him to move, okay, and I said move. Literally at the toilet, dude. Yeah, we're just we're pissing. Piss. And I'm like, dude, you, you, need to, you need to get out of there. He's got a wife. He's got kids. A he doesn't know I had a, me. I had a 3300 square foot office. Yeah, but you see this, this that I'm growing like this, and you're like, all right, like why would you tell me that if that's bad advice? And I don't give bad advice. So you know what? He makes a move, and dude, you go, dude, best thing I ever did. 100%. Dude, listen, so I'm going to say this thing, okay? And I'm, I'm going to have you guys, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity. If I could show you guys what was on the other side of making a decision before you made it, right? you would make every decision yep. or not make it. Yep. But that's not how a decision works. They don't show you what's on the other side of the decision. So that's why the only way that I can make a decision is that I say, let's play this out. Let's say I don't make a decision. I don't text you. I don't learn real estate from you. Let's say I don't, okay? Well, then I'll stay the exact same. I'll struggle. I'll stay stuck. Or what I'm currently doing, which is comfort, and the God of this generation is comfort. I just stay comfortable. Okay. Or I stay exactly where I am. I know what that looks like. Now let's play this out. If he can do it and he's learned real estate, like the back of his hand, and he understands everything from wholesale to flipping, to buying, to I everything. started out dude, digging ditches myself. Right. But I'm saying like from building, like you run everything A to Z. hundred percent. If he knows it, you learn 20 years of experience, right? And you learn it in days. That's amazing. And he stays with you to help one-on-one, -on -one, underwrite deals, do stuff, and get started so that when you finally make your first move, it's a good, educated, calculated move, and you succeed. Guys, when that opportunity is there, you jump. You do it. You don't think. If that's really what you want is you want to be really successful, you do it. And the cool thing what I love about what you said is you said you don't have to quit your job. You said, dude, don't quit your job. I just want you to be able to, to get to where you want to go. Your job is going to get you here. There's no extra vacations. There's no paying your house off. There's no upgrading your house. There's, there's no dreams involved. Where you're at is where you're at and you know where you're going. I'm talking about adding a lot of financial income to your life, teaching you about money, and literally giving you an edge to be able to have different choices. I mean, everybody have qualifies choices. to be a real estate investor, right? They, they everybody. They should, they should understand the other side of it. Yeah. And the reason, and, and there's no reason not to. I mean, if you make money, if you have a job, if you're in, in if you, you got to think, everybody that's watching this video, Andy, lives in what? A piece of real estate. So you're either renting it or you own it. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be somebody else that lives or rents in that home when you die and when you move on. And it's going to always be around. Yeah, so and you need to understand You it. have to understand it. Yeah. yeah, you have to understand it. Yeah, so everybody right now, super important. I said earlier, I said if you went to Google and you literally typed in, um, how do I become a millionaire? I promise you so it you would tell you real estate. real estate creates more millionaires than anything else. Okay, well, that's Google. That's our mother. And so, and he teaches how to do that. So right now you see the number on the screen, make sure you shoot him a text message. Okay. He's got a coaching program. It's kick ass, man. He's got a badass life, a badass business, but on the side, he teaches his specialized skill. So if you want to learn it, this is your opportunity. Hey brother, I appreciate, I appreciate that. It, Andy. Hey, yeah. much love, dude. You guys are going to see a lot of him with me and uh, have a blessed day. You guys kick ass. By the way, how can they find you on Instagram? If they want to uh, go Austin.Hancock1. That's my handle right there. Austin.Hancock1. Also on YouTube. Good. I yep. love it, man. Yeah, sure. you got a pretty cool YouTube channel. And plus, you guys can go find him on Instagram. Guys, have a blessed day. Make sure you shoot him a text message. We'll see you in the next podcast. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with a friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications. And then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.